Hi, I'm Jim Cook. I'm the engineering manager at Service Trucks International and Tiger Cranes. And today we're here talking about how to pair a crane with a body and those considerations that go along with it. So first thing that we need to know is that cranes and bodies and outriggers all have their own rating. And the rating for those uh, on the crane and the body itself are located on the serial number. So if you would look on the serial number plate of the crane or if you would look on the serial number plate of the body, you'd be able to see that this body itself is rated at 50,000 foot-pounds. Now, the ratings are a little different. Um, so a lot of people think of cranes as total lifting capacity. Say, I'm gonna have a 5,000 pound crane so it can lift 5,000 pounds. The load that the body actually sees is a moment rating. So that might be at 10 feet we lift 5,000 pounds, which would be a 50,000 foot-pound crane. And that is how a body is rated. So. Uh, when we consider that, there's also a few other things. So one, that the crane has to at least be smaller than the rating of the body and the rating of the outrigger. Okay, that's, that's first step. Next step is to consider, is the chassis gonna be the right thing for the crane itself? Is the chassis heavy enough? Can it restrain the moment? So when this crane is flipped all the way around and we're lifting off the back of the truck, these outriggers are the fulcrum. So it's pivoting on here and it's trying to use the rest of the truck as counterweight, okay? So um, the frame of the chassis has to be stiff enough to be able to handle that. And every crane has its own specification as far as how much resisting uh, the chassis frame has to have. It's called the RBM. All right, the other thing that we have to look at is body stability. So the outriggers extend and depending on the position that you're lifting the load, the capacity of the crane changes. And that's all located here on this load chart. And we can see the reduction on this body. So out in this back end, the back of the truck is all 100%. But as you get moved towards the front of the truck, that stability isn't quite the same. So it reduces. So in this particular instance, it's 82% of the total moment of the crane that you can actually pick up. And that's strictly based off of what the tipping point of the truck is. So at the point that the wheels come off the ground, that is considered an unstable condition and that is limiting the crane capacity. All right, so one other thing that we have to consider is the chassis carrying capacity or the chassis specifications in general. So uh, every chassis is rated as a, as a gross vehicle weight. And uh, so that might be 19,500 pounds, that might be 22.5, that might be 14.5. Um, every chassis has its own configuration for spring packages. Um, many of our bodies go out with a, a payload upgrade uh, package on the suspension uh, so that we can have it carry the load properly, that you're not sagging in the back end, that it, that, that it rides appropriately going down the road. Um, the other thing that you need to consider uh, regarding chassis and GVW is the fact that you have to figure out how much payload you want left at the end of the day. Here at Service Trucks International, uh, we specify a 10% minimum payload uh, for a body going out the door. So if that's a 19.5 GVW chassis, we want 1,950 pounds available for payload for the, the customer to throw something in the bed of the truck or something like that. Uh, so you do want to make sure that if you're looking at the size of your crane, if you're going to a bigger crane, you're going to have less payload because the weight of the crane is significantly more. Uh, so just all things to consider. All right, uh, that's all we have for today. Thanks for uh, watching this video. If you want more information, please uh, look at servicetrucks.com.